Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And uh, to, today, like I have been doing, I'm going to be looking at the games from last night. And we're going to talk about where the teams may be going based on some of the lineups that they were doing, uh, which players are playing fantastic, which players will stay playing fantastic, all of those sort of things like that. We'll be getting into... Uh, in future videos, we'll be getting into trade speculations, pretty much anything you can think of, any news that comes up, injuries, all of that sort of thing. And what you can do is tell me in the comment section what you think about your team, what how they're doing, what they need to do to improve, if you agree with me, and all that stuff. It's all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. If you like all four major uh Sports and teams within those sports, you'll love Steel Flyers, all sports network. You can find me on there. And the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show, which I do uh, three to five Eastern weekdays. And we do pre pick predictions. We talk about all the stuff that I'm going to talk about here, but in more depth and interactive. So you can be on there. I talk to you. You talk to me. You can put your picks in. If you win, you get virtual prizes. That's called the Perlo Dance. Do it. Yeah, that was pretty easy, wasn't it? Makes you feel good on your insides. Anyways, let's look at the games from last night. There we go. Boom. Flames versus Devils. And oh my gosh, these this Flames team is... Getting to be one of the finest in the land. Now, I got to admit, I didn't give them love before the season started. I was very skeptical of this team uh, with some of the moves they made, but should never, ever uh, underestimate Sutter. I, I you know, uh, he was amazing in LA and I loved him then. And for some reason, I got this idea that, you know, it's that old guy coming back and, you know, the game has passed him by a little bit. No, no. It was stupid of me to think that. The game has always been the same as far as possession is concerned, and I should have realized that. And Sutter is one of the best possession coaches of all time. He was every – all the time in L.A., his possession stats were off the charts, and he's doing it here in Calgary as well. Um, the main reason why – is uh, he stresses that you take the body first, then you take then you take the puck to every player. Skate as fast as you can skate in every situation and move the puck uh, when you are stuck in a situation where you can't move. And more than that, just move the puck fast, especially out of the defensive zone. So all the players come back. Pittsburgh Penguins play this to a T as well. Uh, Sullivan has his guys play exactly like this, modeled after Crosby. So here Sutter's doing it again. I had Calgary to win last night, even though they were on back to back in three games in four nights. Uh, they were just gonna. It's it was pretty likely they were gonna be out out physical, the New Jersey Devils, and that's exactly what they did. Manjil Pani with another two goals, seven goals. Uh, I mean, a guy like Sutter would just absolutely drool over Andrew Mangiapane. He plays exactly the way he wants a player to play, and he's playing fantastic. Elias Lindholm, also seventh goal of the season. Um, people, they, this this team is just running on in, an incredible high. Even Good Branson. And I was definitely uh, critical of getting Good Branson. He hadn't looked good for the last little while, but he is playing. I don't. I never saw it coming. I have to admit, I never saw it coming. He is playing fantastic. Uh, I thought. I thought Sullivan, if he could get Pittsburgh in this year, was a shoe in for Coach of the Year. But wouldn't it be amazing for Sutter to get it? That would be freaking awesome. Old guy comes back, shows everybody how the game is supposed to be played, and uh, gets it done. Uh, my favorite part of uh, last night was Matthew Kachuk playing the way he is known to play. Like he just he doesn't have to do it all this year, but he's still playing with that fire. And this whole team, that's it. The Flames, 
playing with fire. Uh, play, New Jersey put up a pretty good fight. Uh, came back in the end. Uh, let's look at uh, some of the deployment that uh, Sutter is doing and things that he may have changed around. I also have it. I'll, I'll show. We'll go look at the lineups that he's put together as well. Um, Dubé only getting 12 minutes. I kind of like this. He's a smaller guy. He gets run down a little bit over a full uh, season and a game. Um, playing him 12 minutes allows him to play his full bore, get some rest, get back out there and do a full bore. And that's what he wants. He, he just wants you to be able to play at the top of your game when you're on the ice and be honest with them to where that is. Um, anyways, very interesting lineup uh, lineup that he put together last night. I wanted to take a look at. As far as the deployment, it's pretty pretty normal. I love seeing Shillington getting a chance under Sutter. That tells me a lot about how far he's come with his defensive part of his game. Also, I heard that there was some conversation with Goudreau about him being able to play his game with Sutter, and they they actually kind of worked out a deal with each other on a few things that, you know, he can take risks in certain areas and stuff like that. And that's pretty cool. Um, but they look at the lineup he's lineup he put together. Goudreau, Lindholm, Matthew Kachuk. Combination of everything there. Beautiful combination. Matthew Kachuk brings the grit. Elias Lindholm brings a fair amount of grit in himself. And then Johnny Goudreau gets some room to move around and be what he is and pass like he has been. Eight assists and six games played. Those guys know how to keep get themselves open too. It's it's a really cool lineup. Uh, Coleman, Backlund, and Pitlick. That's your shutdown line right there. And Tyler Pitlick for a long time has not got enough credit for how good of a shutdown winger he is. And uh, of course Sutter sees it all the heck. They picked him up from Philadelphia last year, apparently for that role. And uh, he's crushing it. That every time I see it, he, he's just crushing it out there. Blake Coleman looks fantastic on Calgary. Lucic, Monahan, and Lewis. You got a guy that's fighting injuries, put him with two big guys to protect him and do the best he can in the situation that he's in. He probably can play at a limited type of game because of his injuries, and he's like, okay, cool. We'll give you two guys to make sure you're taking care of. Anybody touches you, they'll beat, they'll beat him silly. And uh, you go out there and just be a good two-way guy. And that's what Sean Manahan's doing right now. Uh, and and Mangio Pani Dubé and Brett Ritchie. Uh, that, is that, was that line kept like that the whole time? But what a fantastic way to get Dylan Dubé to play with a really solid player and uh, a, a solid five-on-five -five line. Not big on Brett Ritchie there, but what happens in this when you mixing the lineups like this, I, I think is that there's not one line that you can't, you can focus on here. All four lines have something that they can give offensively. All four lines have uh, a guy that guys that can fight in the corners and get the puck out to someone like Lucic and Lewis, for instance, getting out to Monaghan, try to get that shot away. Uh, Look, I, I just love it. It's it's a great way to do lineups. They didn't. They used to do this a lot uh, back in well Sutter's time when it, well, Sutter's time. I guess it's Sutter's time again. But mixing up lineups like this, where you had offense all through your lineup, and it's starting to come back again. And Sutter's doing it here. Um, Hannafin with Anderson, Shillington with Tanov. I like that so much better. And Valimaki with Gumbrenson. It's just the simple philosophy of having a shutdown guy with an offensive guy to give him an opportunity to go when he can. And Jacob uh, Markstrom, uh, Jak Jakob Markstrom is playing extremely good as well. Um, it's a fantastic lineup that they have. And the energy that Sutter is bringing is awesome. Helping them bring is awesome. Fladar played really well last night too i forgot to mention that um as far as new jersey is concerned this team's going to have a difficult time keeping with the identity that they want to have which is a kind of a, a fast high flying team when they have wedgwood and dawes in goal unfortunately um it's dawes is too young right now 
Wedgwood is, is borderline and and borderline NHL goaltender has been for a long time. They so need Blackwood back. It's uh, it's just unfortunate. I I had high hopes for this team and I still do. If they can get some goaltending back. Oh, by the way, I wanted to look at with Calgary um, the shots. There was a couple things there. Blake Coleman, four shots. See what I mean? Keith Kachuk. That's Goudreau getting it out to Kachuk. And the way they have their lineups, Manjil Pani, three goals, three shots, Dubé. Um, they have those guys that are able to fight in the corners like a pit lick, get the puck out, and give these shooters an opportunity to do what they do. Great lineup. Uh, as far as New Jersey last night, like they were just overmatched physically. Um, they're good, they even they'll have a better chance with teams like Vancouver, guys, teams like that right now that aren't quite as physical. No doubt, New Jersey still needs help in the physicality department. Um, that's why they've got, I believe, Mason Geertsen up there to bring that. They're putting Frederick Gochi in, in there. Dawson Mercer is getting to stay up and scoring points and playing really well. I think he's sometimes the best guy on the ice. But um, they're trying to bring some physicality into, into New Jersey. The, and this team is still just trying to figure itself out. Ty Smith got back into the lineup, and that's really cool. Got 17 minutes. Um, they were That's a huge for them because they are not. They don't really have all that much depth on D. The thing about it is it pushed Ryan Graves down here. I don't know what that's going, what's going on there. I like Jonas Siegenthaler, but I'm still putting Graves up there. What do you guys think? Um, like I said, it's just a matter of getting uh, Dawes and, and Wedgwood not being your primary goaltenders again. And I don't know how long, day to day, Mackenzie Blackwood could be back. Uh, Bernier, they don't even have here. Hmm. Wonder why, wonder why that is. Uh, maybe out longer. Oh, here he is right here. Oh, he's a scratch. Day to day. They're both day to day. So they should get him back again. New Jersey will get back on track again. Um, I'm hoping so because I really like them this year. I thought that they would be a possibly even a bubble team this year. Next game. Um, Lightning versus Penguins. I won't go over this one too, too much. Uh, but the what I the main thing I wanted to say about this game is we're starting to see the Lightning have some determination and some urgency, which is a little tough. You win two cups, uh, a team wins two cups, and sometimes the regular season becomes kind of blah. But this is a team that can't rely on their talent as much as they could before, especially with Kucherov out. Uh, it's just. It's a solid team still, but it needs uh, it needs to play with urgency because it's it's not a team that can just like they did last year, kind of in the regular season, sort of slide through, get some goals at the right times from play from great players like Kucherov, and still win the game. And I saw that they did that a lot last uh, year. Uh, by the way, uh, I never get the Lightning right. I just avoid them altogether. I pick them when they. Uh, they lose when I pick them, and they don't win when I don't pick them. Um, or they win when I don't pick them is what I mean to say. But uh, the lineup's starting to look a little better last night. And I, I bar boule, I said I was talking about it last year. Um, I think that this guy should get himself. Uh, they should really just solidify him in the lineup. I, I love his the way he plays. Um, like we were talking about. Uh, with Dubé, he's that kind of guy that can play 12 minutes, but when he's on the ice, he plays with super high intensity, brings a lot of energy, and can put up some points like he did last night. Um, good to see McDonough pot one. A pot one doesn't happen very often anymore, but uh, still playing solid D. Overall, it was just a um, a game where Jari didn't play well. Jari, I didn't find Jari. I didn't think Jari played very well last night. And uh, overall, the team as well. I wanted to look at the Pittsburgh Penguins. We'll look at the Pittsburgh Penguins here as far as their lineup is concerned. And okay, they lost last night, but 
the fact that they have been winning as much as they have been, um, which is pretty almost every game, with guys Gunsel, Rodriguez, and Kapanen, they cha- he, uh, Sullivan changed the lineup last night a little bit and put Aston Reese with Bluger and McGinn and then Zucker with uh, O'Connor and Heinen. But overall, that lineup shouldn't be winning games. It, it, it's unbelievable that they've done as well as they have. Kind of a groaner last night. Jari didn't have a great game. But they were in it right to the end. Uh, basically, the third period, the floodgates opened and Tampa Bay just kind of took over, which sucked because I had them under five and a half and it looked like it was going to be a solid one at that. But even Demelin, Marino, Matheson, Ruedel, Pedersen, and Friedman, without Latang, this lineup, Ru, Chad Ruedel on, on your second and Matheson on your, on your third, three, four, uh, that's just not adequate. Uh, but they get it done. We'll see if they keep on doing it. They always, screw me up uh the Pittsburgh Penguins because they shouldn't they have lineups that they shouldn't win with and Sullivan is a genius getting the best out of guys the next man up theory as they say um I I I think I never actually put it out there but on my live stream which you can be part of if you sub up uh we I did pick Pittsburgh to win because they just they just win, and it doesn't really ever. It doesn't really make sense. Golden Knights versus the Avalanche. Um, I was really surprised by the uh, by the Avalanche last night. Uh, they didn't play terrible, but it was their first game back from a long road trip, and I know that that's usually a kind of a game that you want to avoid. But they did have a couple days off to get their stuff in order at home before they played this game, but they came out flat again. And honestly, I I put that, I'm starting to get some, I don't know about you guys, but I'm starting to get some red flags with Bednar on this lineup. Um, There's certain times when Colorado needs to be ready and it is on the players, but it's also on the coach as well. Great coaches have their players ready all the time. This was a big game for them. They're two and four, you know, and, and uh, Pacioretty, no stone, no, um, oh, what's his name? Martinez on defense. This is a game they got to have as far as I'm concerned. It's early in the season, but uh, really kind of disappointing that they couldn't pull it out. I, I thought Colorado just hasn't got to the point where they're playing that super aggressive four check that they had before. Um, they haven't got that yet. And they certainly did in the first period. And uh, Vegas took over. Vegas is a team that's still resilient. It's a very resilient team. I took them against the Oilers that they lost when they lost because of their resilience. And the Edmonton Oilers have a tendency to falter against teams that come at them like that. Um, they did come out and they played really well last night. Uh, Dodonov actually got a goal. He still doesn't look good out there, though. My gosh. Um, I still don't think that the Avalanche, or I still don't think that the Golden Knights are going to be able to keep this up without Stone and Pacioretty. It is just one game, and I'm, I'm sure Colorado, when they have to come into this building or vice versa, uh, again, or when this, this team comes into their building next time, will remember that persistence is all they needed to do here. If they would have played a very persistent game like Colorado is known to do, they would have won this game. Big hit, um, McNabb, and I can't remember who it was with Colorado, but huge, huge hit. Awesome. So how did they do their lineups last night? Oh, I didn't put that one up there. Okay, that's all right. We'll go to the next game. Uh, Sharks versus Predators. And yeah, I had had, uh, Predators to win this game. I, I think for the future for the Predators, they... 
If you're going to go into the Predators building and not work hard, you're going to lose. This team is working like hard like crazy. Um, talk about if Colorado played with the sense of urgency that Nashville is playing with right now, they'd hardly ever lose a game. And uh, that we'll see if they do that, but Nashville is playing that. And the guy that's kind of leading it, I think, is Matt Duchesne. Matt Duchesne, the guy that we've been wondering what's going on with, is he ever going to, is he ever going to get his career back in, in order again? And uh, now you got the beard, kind of long hair. He looks a little different, looks tough. And I wouldn't even doubt if uh, Hines, who a lot of people have, I've heard doing my live stream, he gets a lot of flack. And I'm like, I don't know, man. I think this guy's pretty good. I think he gets his team pretty prepared. Uh, maybe even kind of hinted, hey, you know what? Look tough, act tough, be tough. Because uh, you got to be tougher. And he did. He needed to be tougher. He was playing too slick, too um, cute. And uh, now I see him being a lot more straight ahead. Uh, a lot taking on players more often, taking a hit to make a play more often. Uh, really awesome. And you got to put that on Heinz. Come on, man. He, he, there's a coach that you, players don't change that generally by themselves. There's a coach there that can get that out of them. And it seems that Heinz is doing it. Josie, oh, he's maybe another Norris in the offing for Josie if this team makes the playoffs. He is playing spectacular. And bringing Fabro along with them. Uh, that uh, line, which we'll look at the lines for uh, Nashville here in a second, of uh, Forsberg, Duchesne, and uh, we'll take a look at it. I can't remember who the other one was. But the whole lineup is playing really, really well. Now, for San Jose, actually, I'm going to go down here and do Nashville. We'll talk about San Jose in a second. Um, Luke Cunning's losing it again, he's losing his minutes. Uh, that's a guy that has to play with intensity as well. Um, he's, he doesn't have the skill level to play uh, like, like Duchesne. Cute. Duchesne's got a lot of skill, but he's not like an elite skill guy. And Cunning isn't either. And if he's not playing with intensity, as you can see here, you're going to lose your minutes. Jack Love Trenning gets 15 minutes. He's not going to get a lot of points for you. But one thing he is going to do is... He's going to play with intensity. He does every single game. Uh, they have Tamasino and Novak playing on the, th the fourth line. That is really cool. I like when coaches take their young guys, put them on the fourth line as an energy line, and give them a role to do. Not really worrying about scoring right now. Just keep it in the offensive zone. Do the little things that you need to do because that's usually what players that – as they like, say a player like Duchesne, tons of talent, but I don't think ever, whenever, if you look back in his career in Colorado and all of that, they, he, I don't think there was anybody that took him aside or gave him the opportunity to be like a third or fourth line guy and just do the little things, learn the little things. And Hines is getting that out of him right now. And, uh, and then having Gino there too, he is, he's one of those guys. And you're going to get your minutes with him if you play like that. I love it. I love the way Brian Johansson and, like, nobody here really has huge minutes. Colton Sissons getting 17.42. Why? Intensity, intensity, intensity. This team's going to be surprised. I really do believe that they're going to surprise this year. Um, Nashville. We'll look at exactly how... He deployed the lineup here. Um, Forsberg, Granlin, and Duchesne. Putting Granlin in the middle of those guys, little jitterbug that plays hard, uh, is a good passer. I think that's a great pick pickup and a great place to put him. Toivonen, he's giving Toivonen a chance up there. That's a guy that is learning how to play the physical game in the NHL, and he's struggling with it. So he puts him with Ryan Johansson, big center, to kind of give him a little bit of confidence out there that there's a guy out there that can kind of have his back. And uh, Luke Conant. So look at this lineup. Toivonen, 
Johansson and Cunnan. Two Cunnan and Toivonen are both guys that are struggling with the physical part of the game. So they give he gives Ryan Johansson the leadership role of helping these guys become those players. Great role playing for each, giving each team player a role and job to do every day, keeping their intensity up and uh, helping guys keep their intensity up. This is, to me, this is fantastic uh, role deployment. Jakob Trennan with Sissons and Janot. I mean, that line, I wouldn't want to go up against that line. Those, those guys are going to beat you silly. And if you're not prepared to skate, forget about it. They're going to eat you up. They may not get lots of points, uh, but they're doing not too bad. Sizen's got three points and seven, and Janot's got three points and seven. But they're going to be in the offensive zone more often than the defensive zone. And if they are in the defensive zone, if you do happen to get stuck down there, they're going to bring pain. They are going to bring pain. I love it. So Nick Cousins, that's who was on that line with Novak and Tamasino. Again, Role deployment. Nick Cousins has an opportunity as a leader, uh, as a veteran, to show these young guys what it means to do the little things. That's what Nick Cousins is known for. So give him a role. Fantastic. Everybody feels that there's part, they're part of the system and they have, uh, a, they have a serious role to play on the team. And this team is playing like that. And, of course, you got Juicy Saros, who is uh, – just um, you know, he could have, uh, he could have a Vesna in his future. He's playing so well, unbelievable. Uh, San Jose Sharks. Uh, okay, it was a tough game. I thought this was actually kind of a win for them. They were in their fifth or sixth on the road, and they got to go home the next night. You're trying to keep that out of your mind. Your legs are heavy, uh, playing against a tough team like Nashville, and I thought they fought pretty hard considering. Uh, and uh, you you know give uh, Bugner credit for uh, he just said it too. He said this is the best energy this team has ever had. We all know the Kane situation and what's been going on with that, and uh, he takes it out publicly in, he, that this energy is better. If you remember, and I'm sure you have because you've been watching all of these, right? That I said that I think the San Jose energy is going to make this team a lot better than people think, and so far, so good. Put this one behind. You can't win them all, but my they they had the their best period was the third period, which means this team is gutting out games. They played really well in the third period. Timo Meyer potted one to make it interesting, but overall, I just thought that uh, they played very well. It was a very hard fought game. I watched a lot of it. I like watching these kind of games. And Reimer, I tell you, Nabokov is a goalie whisperer. He's been playing extremely well so far. If That would be amazing if he could get Reimer back to where he was way back in uh, Toronto where he was playing his best hockey again. Next. Also uh, with San Jose and the Kane situation, I like the way they're handling the uh, – I like the way they're handling it. It's fairly public. They're not – hiding away from it uh, and they're not even saying that he'll never be back but it seems that they're putting uh, an onus on him taking accountability for his actions and then they'll see what happens after that uh, Wild versus Canucks and uh, this game I had the Wild for sure I'm getting concerned about the Vancouver Canucks Uh they they're just soft up front. Yeah, they've got guys, they've got guys that play hard. No doubt about that. Uh, the trade that they made for, the trade that they made for, uh, Ek or not Ekholm, Ekman Larson. What am I saying Ekholm for? Ekman Larson looks not bad, but the problem is they have their best energy players are. Hoglander, Garland, that's who I was trying to say, who go out there and play with high energy, but they're very small. And they're getting overmatched physically. I think that they could end up tiring out. They're bigger players, um, except for Bo Horvat, who's a beast every time he's on the ice, 22 minutes. 
um, are really not do, uh, performing that role. So Lamico is not getting enough minutes to do it. It's I think this team's going to wear out, and it's not doing very well already. So if they start wearing out, it could get even bigger troubles for them. Um, Minnesota, I love their overall game in general. And I've said that for a long time, uh, ever since uh, Everson came in. Their offensive coverage and uh, the way they play in the offensive zone, the passing, it's meticulous and fun to watch. Uh, Zuccarello got a a nice uh, breakaway goal there. And then Brodeen got his first of the season, leaving Vancouver to have to come back. And I just don't see the energy level in this team. Not to mention, Tucker Pullman got injured last night, and that's trouble. And that shouldn't be trouble, because Tucker Pullman shouldn't be in your top four. That's the problem. And, And that's even bigger than what I just said about the offense. The defense of Ekman Larson Hughes uh, is too soft. They're they're too soft to be playing as many minutes as they have. And Myers even at his size should be a lot. You know, it, it's always been Myers' mo that everybody wanted him to use the body, but he never did it enough, especially for his size. And it leaves guys like Burrows and Poolman who just got injured and Rathbone trying to do the best they can with what they do on the ice, but unfortunately they're not on the ice enough to be able to establish a physical game. And I think this team is in trouble. You got Demko and you're struggling as much as they are right now. It's uh, not looking good. Um, Oh, I wanted to say, and I'll get into it right now with uh, Rem Pitlick. Rem Pitlick, to me, last night was one of the best players on the ice. He only got nine minutes and seven seconds. If he keeps on playing like he did last night, and this is a waiver pickup. He's been kind of sitting in the minors most of his career. If he plays like he did last night, this guy's going to get a lot more minutes in his future. Wow, the the wheels on that guy. It's really fantastic. Um, I would like, I'm really surprised Jordan Greenway isn't, taking that next step here. He's a big boy. He should be, as far as I'm concerned, should be playing a lot tougher than he does. Uh, His skating looks to have regressed. What do you guys think about that in Minnesota? Do you agree with that? Maybe it's the line mates. You know, Ryan Hartman isn't your classic second liner at all, but that's for sure. And uh, maybe if he had, when they get another uh, center that's, uh, ready, maybe Rossi or something like that. Greenway will start looking a lot better. But his his minutes are starting to slip. So that tells me that Dean Evison, who's a great coach, is really not happy with him altogether. Uh, I, I think it's time maybe to, to, to make this third liner for Kevin Fiala experiment go away and have him play up here on the second line. Bring Greenway down to bring some muscle uh, with uh Goudreau and and Bukestad. At least you've got a physical line that can go out there and, and soften up the other team for guy, for for guys like Kaprizov, Erickson, Eck, and Zuccarello. However, on paper, this team shouldn't be as good as it is, really. Uh, but Everson gets the best out of this team. There's no doubt about that. Still loving Alice Goligoski. John Merrill's playing some of the best I've ever seen him in his career. So, and, you know, Dean Evison does get the best out of players. Finally, Victor Rask is scratched. He has not looked good so far this year. No doubt about that. Um, as far as Vancouver is concerned, here, look, this is what I mean about the lineup. You got Tanner Pearson, who should be more physical than he is, but he, he's just an up and down winger. Uh, pretty vanilla guy playing with Horvat and, and Garland. Horvat and Garland, I understand. you got two guys that play high energy, can get the puck out of the corner, and what they're trying to do is pass it out to Tanner Pearson, but Tanner Pearson just doesn't seem to be there. Um, Pug Colson, Miller, and Besser, weird lineup. I, I, he only played, Pug Colson only played six minutes last night. Uh, obviously, they don't think he's physically ready yet to play the type of game that he's going to play in the NHL at for high minutes. Uh I think he's just kind of 
throwing the lines, seeing what they if he can find some something in here because it's not working. Highmore, Pedersen, and Hoglander again, very weird line. Don't really get it. And then Bailey, Lamico, and Chase on. Finally, on defense, uh, this is what I was talking about. You got Ekman, Lar you got Larson and Myers together. That's not gonna. They're, they're just gonna skate around a lot, and that's what they do. They skate around a lot in the defensive zone. Ekman Larson can move the puck up well. Got to give him that. But Tyler Myers has to play physical in the defensive zone. Get the puck off, hand it over to Larson, and I don't see it. Uh, Quinn, that's the reason why they had Pullman with Hughes to do that very thing. And now that he's out, this lineup gets pretty darn thin. Who are you going to bring in, Shen or Hunt? I don't know. I'm not going to be on Vancouver for a while. Um, I'll tell you that. Next game. Um, I, By the way, I think people have been asking me who the first coach to be fired is. I think it may be Green. And I don't think he deserves it. I don't think he deserves it at all. I, I just think he has a tough, very tough lineup to... Uh, to make lineups with. That's why he's scrambling them around so much the way he is. He's trying to find something in there. But I just don't think the pieces are fits to play the roles necessary to win hockey games. Uh, Winnipeg Jets versus the Ducks. And Jets just squeak one out here. I really thought the Jets were going to be more on top of it than they were early. Um, kudos to the Ducks. Might have been one of the best games I've seen them play. Uh, I'll tell you what. I, I mentioned it before about Trevor Zegers. Trevor Zegers is a guy that brings a positivity to the room that you don't find every day. Uh, he is a guy that doesn't even understand the word losing. He's go, They're going to win, and that's it. And he brings that energy to the team. And I think what I saw last night was an energy from Anaheim that believe they could win the game. And we haven't seen that too much from the Anaheim Ducks uh, on a regular basis. If that stays up, I'm going to be on the Ducks more than I was before. I was getting pretty frustrated because I really thought Winnipeg, their last game against Minnesota, there was a fire that came in them again. And uh, I thought that that would carry on over here. Early, they didn't. They looked like they underestimated Anaheim. And you just can't do that in this league. So... Sonny Milano scored two goals, was definitely the best game I've seen him play for a very long time. Maybe a couple times in Columbus, but it's been a very long time since I've seen Sonny Milano play like that. Uh, Josh Manchin, Potts won. Uh, Nikolai Ehlers was the one. And I actually went to bed in the third period here. And I went to bed kind of like, ah, oh, geez, I missed my Winnipeg pick. But nope, Ehlers comes and scores. I didn't watch how that happened. Uh, was there a breakdown with Anaheim? That's the one thing the Anaheim Ducks still are learning is to hold leads. They tend to lose leads an awful lot. And that's belief. And I think that will I think that's mostly just believing that you are better than the other team. They're getting better at that, but it, maybe they lost it in the third period last night. As far as deployment is concerned for the Winnipeg Jets, um, what did I, who did, uh, Stastny. Look at Stastny playing 21 minutes and 33 last night. 35, 36-year-old. The guy just always plays both ways. One of the most underrated two-way players in the game. And without Shifley and without uh, Wheeler, He's getting an opportunity to show these young guys what it means to be the guy to step up. And as far as I saw last night, he certainly did that. Love seeing Spechnikov getting 13 minutes and playing very well, scoring a goal. Uh, he's gone through some serious injury issues, and hopefully he's over them now. And if he is, this was a walk-on guy. You know, great pickup by Winnipeg if this turns out to be the way the – way, uh, it's looking like it could be. And Dubois, whew, take a deep breath, guys. Uh, sigh of relief. Dubois playing very well. Overall, I thought that the Winnipeg you know, came out flat, but they fought hard, got out of their doldrums, and pulled it off. 
Um, playing seven defensemen last night, not sure why they did that. Uh, maybe you know, just wanting to give some defense, get some of the defensemen a little bit of a break from playing lots of minutes. Uh, like, for instance, Nate Schmidt. Nate Schmidt's a smaller guy. Playing him lots of minutes, he might tire out. Brock Boilu in to play a couple minutes in some in a limited role to give these guys a bit of a uh, a bit of a rest and play at their top peak. Not a bad decision. Hollabuck looked pretty good. I still haven't seen the Hollabuck that makes you think he's going to stop every puck, but we'll probably see that back again. Um, Milano again played extremely well. And uh, the defense for Anaheim looked good early. I don't know what happened in the third period, but it's starting to mesh here with Anaheim. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling that the Anaheim Ducks are starting to mesh together a little bit and play a solid team game. So it should be uh, – uh, let's get to how they did put the lineups together for Anaheim Ducks. Uh, they st uh, He's sticking with uh, – He's sticking with Henri, Henrique Zegers and Raquel. He's keeping the lines pretty much the same. Now, I, I do believe they brought Sonny Milano up here and played him up there, and it would be so beneficial if, uh, if they could do that. Dallas Eakins, for D Dallas Eakins and the Anaheim Ducks, that they would be able to he'd be able to take up that role because Adam Henrique would be much better, I think down there with Lunderstrom and Silberberg. That would give him a solid third line. Give him a little time this year, Anaheim. I just I, I just have a feeling they're going to surprise a little bit. Do I have the other one there? Yes. Okay, I already looked at Vancouver. Okay, next game. Next game is the San Jose Sharks and the Montreal Canadiens. And uh, I don't know. I thought for some reason that Montreal would come back, uh, get out of being in Montreal, come together, have a little sigh of relief and, you know, clear their minds a little bit and come out and play a good game here. But they didn't. And Seattle played extremely well with Yanni Gord as their number one center. Totally changed the whole uh, uh, makeup of that team in one game. Uh, he's, it, I'm, I'm really going to be interested to see if Yanni Gord can really take the reins and be a number one like they are expecting him to do. But more than anything, I'm loving Brandon Tanov on this team, man. Talk about a guy who's just been, who decided to be an energy leader and he's potting goals. Five goals already for Brandon Tata. Cool, man. When he was in Winnipeg, I, I remember thinking, that guy seems to have a lot more offense in him than he has. Went to Pittsburgh. They deployed him in the same kind of role and went, as they did in Winnipeg. Now he's got a chance to show he's got offense, and he is darn well doing it, and he's doing it well. Um, as far as uh, Montreal, it was just – terrible game. Allen looks like he doesn't have any confidence. They don't really have, I mean, uh, Malton Bowl doesn't seem to have the uh, ability to be a, a, a NHL goaltender, to tell you the honest truth. So, it's tough. You have all that stuff going on in Montreal. Weber just said, came out and basically said he's retired now. Uh, all the people that left last year it was deflating, and they just can't seem to get their heads out of the fact that uh, they can be good still. They can't get themselves in a position to think that they're, they can be good still. This is a team that doesn't look like it believes in itself. They got a really young rookie line. Caulfield's playing a lot of minutes at 14 minutes a game, and you look, the whole, the whole, every line looks like they're struggling hard, hard. As far as... Uh, who did they play most last night? See, look, they're not even giving anybody really a lot of minutes, except for Suzuki. They're just keeping everybody's minutes down. Gallagher looks frustrated as all heck. 
this is a guy that just hates to lose. Hates, hates, hates. Every game they show him showing some sort of frustration where he bangs the door, breaks the stick or whatever. It's all his own. He, he wants to be a guy that, you know, he knows what his role is. And when he doesn't score, doesn't get points, he gets frustrated really hard. Um, I'm very – Drew Ann's getting 12 minutes again. I don't know what's going on there. I hope you're all right, dude. Seriously hope you're all right. As far as uh, Seattle is concerned, um, Schwartz is getting a lot of minutes out there. I, I I really don't know if I think that's a good idea. I, I think that he's coming off of a lot of injuries. He plays hard. He's not a big guy. I think I would like to see him about 15 minutes where he can just put out his full bore every game right now until he really gets back into the groove again. Could be wrong, but... I think that would be best. I personally think that would be best for him. And maybe Morgan Geeky, who's not, is still only getting 11 minutes, can get a little more of those minutes. Um, or somebody like that. Maybe Donato. Raise them up a little bit. He looks like he gets tired late in games to me. As far as uh, defense is concerned, they had Hayden Flurry in there. Looked good again last night. Looked really good. Um, hopefully he can stay in the lineup. I... I I like the guy. Uh, he's took a long time to figure it out in the NHL with Carolina. He's getting a big chance here, doing what he needs to do. Five hits, good for him. Yanni Gord had five hits last night too, actually. Pretty impressive. And, oh, sorry, that was five shots on goal. Sorry about that. <laughs> he had five shots on goal, Flurry. Oh, wow. That's a lot for him. I thought those were hits. His hits usually out way his shots on goal that's pretty cool and Dunn Vince Dunn getting 23 minutes oh my gosh it's so awesome to see Hackstall's getting confidence in Vince Dunn he's got so much potential he could have been the steal of this expansion draft if he's going to play at his absolute peak I don't know what happened in St. Louis but he ticked off Barube it was uh, just a mess there and uh, now it seems that uh, Hackstall's given him a good shot and it's good to see Grubauer had a nice game as well. Uh, Seattle, uh, let's see. Yeah, they had Schwartz with y Yanni Gord and Cal Yarncrock. Uh, interesting combination. High energy. That's a high energy line right there. No doubt about that. That's just going by going out to be a pure high energy line. And that's why I said about that about Jaden Schwartz. He's got to play at a super high energy to be effective. It's not that big. He's willing to go into the tough spots. That's why he struggles with injuries a little bit. I think that the, it's best to optimize his uh, energy by keeping his minutes down a little bit. Um, Donskoy, Wenberg, and Eberle, soft. I, I, it's why I kind of thought I would, they would mix these up. That's a very soft line. It was effective last night, but going forward, we'll see how that line works out. I'm not so sure about that line. Tan of McCann and oh yeah, Mason Appleton. You had a terrible injury last night. Not good at all. I had high hopes for Mason Appleton this year. Really liked him in Winnipeg last year. Uh, thought maybe he would be a point producer for him, but so far he hasn't been able to produce really at the level that I thought he would. And then Geeky, Shahan, and Donato. And Morgan Geeky all continually gets that bottom fourth line because of his skating. I don't know. I don't know. I, I think I would like, uh, I guess that's the only place you can put him though in this lineup, really. So, but overall, I thought Seattle and, and, and the great home opener, too. It almost was like having two home openers in Seattle. So excited for uh, Seattle fans to have a team there. Pretty cool to watch uh, that. Pretty cool to watch that new team. And the Seattle fans, you guys are awesome, man. The, 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 the um, noise, the uh, enthusiasm, and uh, everything in that building was second to none. Absolutely fantastic. Loved it. Um, this is why I took Montreal. Because Ducharme changed the lineups to what I thought was the best lineup you could put together for Montreal. Joanne Dvorak Anderson. Solid third line or solid he is a third liner unfortunately but solid two-way guy with two speedsters 
Uh, I, I think that Josh Anderson's not good defensively, so Devorah can cover that up a little bit. Jonathan Duran's a skill guy. I like that combination. Hoffman, Suzuki, and Gallagher. Great. Gallagher is a strong defensive player. Hoffman's not. And then Suzuki there to feed over to Hoffman. Uh, Gallagher to go down in the corner and do that. That's what, if you've been watching this whole video, that's what makes up great lines. You need at least one guy to be able to fight in the corners, to get the puck out to a guy like Nick Suzuki who backs him up and get it out to Hoffman. Tyler Toffoli, Perot, and Caulfield. I love that line. Um, it's a little soft, but Matthew Perot is an underrated passer in this league. And uh, he can pass to Toffoli and Caulfield and give them a line that they can put out there to uh, against fourth line guys. Uh, um, maybe their best shutdown guys are probably not going to be focusing too much on this lineup. And they can sneak a couple goals in there. I actually like that line. And then Lekanen, Paquette, and Armia. But the big problem here has been defense for uh, Montreal. Um, it just hasn't been good enough. Romanoff has not been what people expected so far. David Savard, I said last year, he didn't have a great year. He happened to win a cup, and he's not having a good year this year. Uh, I Did I? Oh yeah, and Brett Kulup and Sammy Miku is not that great either. Jake Allen looks like he has completely lost confidence, and that's probably the biggest out of all of this. You don't have a goaltender with confidence. The rest of the team sort of follows in the same suit. All right, that's my full 42, boys and girls. That's all I have to give. Hope you enjoyed the spine programming. Uh, I'll be back trying to do this again. Let me know if you enjoy it, uh, and I'll keep it up. Have a great day. Lots of love to you. Okay, bye.